everything is automatic. All I have to do is push the button. Okay. It's a camera that every amateur buys. It's all in there. Oh, no. Helmut Newton was often hailed the king of kink, and he was a visionary force of nature in the realm of fashion photography in the 20th century. Known for his provocative and daring style, he pushed the boundaries of conventional beauty and societal norms through his lens. Today we're going to dive into the captivating life and the work of this iconic photographer, exploring the intricacies of his artistry, the controversies around his images, and the everlasting impact that he had on the world of photography. From his striking compositions to his fearless exploration of power dynamics and sexuality, Helmut Newton's work continues to captivate and inspire. And so, let's shine our spotlight onto Helmut Newton. Helmut's early life was one of affluence and rebellion. Born to a father who was a wealthy button manufacturer, he navigated the decadent society of 1930s Berlin. The turning point in Helmut Newton's life came in 1936, when, at the age of 16, he embarked on a journey to persuade his father to allow him to pursue photography as a career. Under the guidance of German Jewish photographer Eva, Helmut's apprenticeship became a crucible for his artistic development. Eva, recognized for her innovation and daring approach to photography, exposed him to the avant-garde spirit prevailing in the artistic circles of the time. Her studio became a sanctuary for experimentation, shaping the budding photographer's perspective on the intersection of art and societal dynamics. However, this promising period of creative incubation under Eva was abruptly cut short. The ominous cloud of history cast a dark shadow over the artistic sanctuary as Eva's studio fell victim to the sweeping tides of Nazi oppression. The tragedy unfolded with Eva's demise in a concentration camp in December 1944, leaving behind a void in Helmut Newton's artistic journey. The fusion of privilege, defiance, and tragedy during Helmut's formative years created a complex and nuanced backdrop for his evolution as a photographer. From the opulent halls of Berlin to the devastating realities of his mentor's fate, these early experiences would indelibly shape his rebellious spirit, and the innovative vision that propelled him into the forefront of 20th century photography. In the lead-up to World War II, Helmut Newton's family sought refuge from the encroaching shadows of Nazi Germany, finding solace in South America in 1938. His time in Singapore took a dramatic turn when the British, viewing him as a friendly enemy alien, interned him in 1940, leading to his relocation to Australia. In September 1940, he landed in Sydney, subsequently finding himself in a camp in Victoria, where he stayed until 1942. Upon his release, he briefly engaged in casual work as a fruit picker before deciding to enlist as a truck driver for the Australian Army. Remarkably, he navigated the entire war without encountering any combat. Post-war, he embraced British citizenship, adopting the name Newton as a symbolic change in identity. Newton then returned to his artistic roots in photography and married actress June Brown in 1948. You may also know June by her photography pseudonym, Alice Springs. Captured for American Vogue during the late 1950s, this photograph showcases Australian supermodel Janice Wakeley adorned in a chic black top, a matching checked woolen skirt, and a stylish handbag. Sporting goggles around her neck, she leans out of an open-top car, navigating a city street with an outstretched arm securely holding her handbag. Against the backdrop of a bustling street, Wakeley's demeanor remains remarkably composed and serene. The fusion of her comfortable yet fashionable ensemble coupled with her confident pose hints at a spirit of freedom and independence, offering a prescient glimpse into the impending wave of the sexual revolution and women's rights movements that would define the 1960s. As part of Newton's dynamic outdoor series portraying the modern woman, this image signifies a shift from traditional studio-centric fashion photography, boldly venturing onto the animated streets. It encapsulates the distinctive irreverence that would later become synonymous with Newton's unique signature in the world of fashion photography. 
1956, Helmut went into partnership with fellow German refugee Henry Talbot, setting up a studio in Melbourne, specializing in fashion and advertising photography. Newton had been working on assignments for Australian Vogue, when in 1957 he received a 12-month contract from British Vogue to work in London. However, the conservative atmosphere at British Vogue stifled his burgeoning creativity, prompting a decisive move to the artistic haven of Paris, France. Paris, with its bohemian allure, became the incubator for Newton's distinctive style. The iconic portrait Le Smoking emerged as a symbol of his artistic metamorphosis. Taken by Helmut Newton in 1975 for Vogue, this photo features a woman standing alone on a dimly lit street, holding a cigarette. She's wearing Le Smoking, a tuxedo designed by Yves Saint Laurent in 1966. At the time, seeing women in trousers was controversial. Newton used the street where he lived in Paris as a backdrop, highlighting the model's androgynous look with her masculine pose, cigarette, and no makeup. It's a key example of Newton celebrating independent women who live life on their own terms. Le Smoking became iconic, worn by style icons like Catherine Deneuve and Liza Minnelli. Art critic Lindsay Baker said, Newton and Saint Laurent created a moment in fashion history. His full-time engagement with French Vogue not only provided financial stability, but unleashed the unrestrained expression of his avant-garde vision. During this era, he crafted a reputation as a globally acclaimed fashion photographer, showcasing a distinctive style brimming with compositions provocatively infused with erotically charged voyeurism and steeped in sadomasochistic fetishism. He once said, I love vulgarity. I am attracted to bad taste. It is a lot more exciting than supposed good taste, which is nothing more than a standardized way of looking at things. Inspired by the inventive snapshots and starry portraits of Hungarian photographer Bresai, Newton steered away from the usual objectified model imagery. He boldly introduced women radiating unapologetic sexuality, flipping the script in what was traditionally seen as a man's world. But with innovation comes criticism. During this period, Newton's work faced disapproval from feminist groups who saw the portrayal of a sexualized female body as reinforcing the male gaze. For instance, Newton crafted this provocative photograph during the zenith of second-wave feminism, commissioned by the Hermes Fashion House. We see a woman on all fours on a bed, clad in a bra and riding boots, wearing a leather saddle on her back. This image epitomizes Newton's audacious fusion of sexual subversion and high fashion throughout the 1970s. The photograph reportedly horrified Mr. Hermes upon viewing. It sparked controversy beyond the advertising realm as well, drawing criticism from feminists who deemed it pornographic and misogynistic. Yet, it challenges us. One critic or champion of this photo asked the question, is she servile or being served? The photograph encourages broader reflections on the fashion industry's practices and the commodification of luxury goods. While some interpret it as objectifying women, others see it as a bold revelation of what fashion already does anyway. It can be seen as a critique of fashion magazines that reduce women to passive commodities akin to the clothes that they wear. This playful subversion remains a touchstone in modern fashion photography to this day. The enduring shock of this photograph compels us not to passively consume, but demands a more critical interpretation. Entering the 1970s, the Newtons faced adversity. Helmut fell ill, prompting June to step in for a cigarette ad shoot. A year later, Helmut suffered a heart attack in New York, threatening his fervor for work. Amidst all of these health challenges, Helmut took a hiatus from commissioned work to explore female sexuality through vignettes on fetishism, sadomasochism, lesbianism, and moral complexity. Blending erotica with surreal decadence, Newton's work found a place in both high- and lowbrow magazines. Creating erotic narratives for We and maintaining a 30-year collaboration with Playboy, he delved into dark fantasies, shaping the subversive aesthetic he's renowned for. While not every photo reached its zenith, exceptional portraits of Natasha Kinski, Elsa Peretti, and Christine DeBell stood out. Like this one, which Newton considered to be a photograph that epitomized the 1970s, 
Blending the two worlds of erotic and fashion photography, Newton represents the coming out into the open of his exploration of sexuality as traditional moral values loosened following the sexual liberation of the 1960s. Advancing his career, Newton turned his lens to celebrities, such as David Lynch, Madonna, Nicolas Cage, and Andy Warhol. He photographed political figures like Jean-Marie Le Pen and British Prime Minister Margaret Thatcher. Newton's portraiture aimed to reveal the essence of his subjects, bridging the gap to seemingly untouchable figures. These commissions, frequently featured in Vanity Fair, extended into the 1980s. Honoring his impactful career, the dawn of a new century marked the celebration of his life and his work through a retrospective at the New National Gallery in Berlin. This exhibition, spanning his work from the 1960s, embarked on a global tour, complemented by a book succinctly titled, Work. Helmut Newton's lens didn't confine itself to a studio. It roamed the vibrant streets, capturing the immediacy and vitality reminiscent of paparazzi photographs. He believed that a woman's life unfolded in the gritty realities of the streets, cars, hotel rooms, and not just the sterile backdrops of white-walled studios. By infusing journalistic elements into his work, Newton brought a raw human interest into his photographs. His images challenged societal norms, portraying women not as passive objects but as empowered individuals. Newton's lens exuded independence and authority, urging viewers to confront their own preconceptions and the voyeuristic nature of their gaze. What set Newton apart was his eclectic fusion of influences from cinema, erotica, journalism, and art all seamlessly interwoven. He defied the traditional distinctions between highbrow and lowbrow art, introducing a truly novel perspective in the world of fashion photography. Thank you all so much for watching this video on Helmut Newton. He's a photographer who I greatly admire, uh, whose work I greatly admire, and uh, yeah, I, I was very excited to put this video together. It, it was a long time coming, so I'm glad I could finally get it out there. Let me know in the comments what you think of Helmut Newton's work, uh, which other photographers you think I should cover in future Artist Spotlight episodes. Go ahead and hit the subscribe button, hit the bell to be notified when new videos are released. You could also find that join button and become a member, and for a few bucks a month, you can help this channel grow, and you could also get some interesting perks. And with that, I'm going to leave you all with some more photos by the great Helmut Newton, and I'll see you all next time.